Welcome to HR.com Live. This podcast is produced by HR.com, the number one destination to help 1.7 million HR executives maximize human potential and drive extraordinary business results. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to HR.com Live. My name is Dr. Patty Fletcher, and I'm the Chief Equity Advocate and HR Disruptor here at HR.com. And I'm on a mission to disrupt the business of people at every level and every function of the workplace. And I'll be your host for today. In this episode, we're going to be talking with my good friend, Kelly Fitzsimmons, about how virtual reality is the answer to unconscious bias leadership upscaling. I cannot wait because we are nowhere near close to moving the needle. Kelly Fitzsimmons is a serial tech entrepreneur, artist, and mother of two. Recently, she published her best-selling book, Lost in Startup Landia, Wayfinding for the Weary Entrepreneur. She is the co-founder of Custom Reality Services, a virtual reality production company whose first two projects across the line in 2016 and Ash 68 in 2019 premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. An active angel investor, she serves on the technology committee for Bell USA, a venture fund that invests in women-led startups. Kelly, that's awesome. With only 2% of funding going to female founders, we need more folks like you. Kelly, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Patty. It's good to be here. Well, uh, you know, it's this is disruption at its best, right? And disruption is when there's something ineffective or inefficient and in our day and age also inequitable. And we've got to change it, right? New status quo. And so my first question is when we think about all that in disrupting diversity and inclusion, essentially the unconscious bias that that really um, amplifies the imbalance of power, why should we care about virtual reality? How is it helping? Yeah, so VR to date has gone through a series of different iterations, and the most recent one is really profound. We're finally at a place where the processing power is enough that we can be able to start doing things that up until now we've never been able to do in storytelling. So prior to VR, you know, 2.0, which this is really, this is now, we weren't able to put people fully into immersive experiences where they were having a first person experience. So what we can do now in storytelling is let people choose their own adventure and be able to walk in the steps and literally in the shoes of somebody else, which up until now, the best we could do is omniscient observer. It's very different to see something bad happen to someone else and something different when it happens or it feels like it happens to you. That is so true and really gives like that phrase, right? Put yourself in my shoes. (laughs) Totally different meaning at this point, because guess what? We can't. And folks, when Kelly's saying VR, if you don't know it, which what she is saying is virtual reality, that's um, just a shortening of the term. So virtual reality is not new, right? It's been around for a few years. What makes it so dramatically different today? So in the first two iterations of virtual reality in the 80s and the 90s, we just didn't have the processing speed to do what we can do today. So Today, it's much more of a compelling experience. It feels genuinely immersive. It feels like you're there. And we've moved past these, as we've moved past these technology barriers, you know, we are now able to create these first person experiences. And that is what's so dramatically different. It's choosing your own adventure. There is no real director other than the person who's watching it at that time. So the viewer is in the director's chair. And so when you have your own experience, you can start to draw your own conclusions. And that's what makes it so compelling, particularly for education, because we're now able to scale first person experiences. It's, you know, the, the first the first few steps around change, right? You and I both know that when it comes to kind of organized change, right, large scale transformation that's, that requires cultural shifts, that you're only successful at best 25% of the time. And it's because we look at change, it's such a one size fits all, when really change happens at that individual level, right? Awareness, and then, you know, I wanna be part of it, and then knowing how to actually create that change. This is huge. I mean, you're, you are really cutting out a lot of pieces that have, People 
people who've led change have had trouble with, right? Whether it's unconscious bias or anything, it's amazing. So now I'm going to ask you the question. I've already decided how this is going to make a difference, but you're <laughs> the expert. Um, how has your work in VR made a difference? So we made a conscious choice early on to focus on social justice, virtual reality, which from a business sense, you know, meant that we were walking away from a lot of venture capital. There's a lot of money coming into the space, but we chose not to go in that direction. Our perspective was that for, for this new medium, it is really perfect for social justice. It does allow us to shortcut a lot of the biases that our brain is just so good at filtering out experiences. The direct experience is a different category. Um, and so what, we, what we've been doing is allowing people to experience these things and watching their reactions and been working with some others, as I'll talk to you in a minute, about how it impacts them. We all think we know how we're going to react in a given situation, but the truth is we're clueless. Um, we can't really know until we're there. And that's what virtual reality allows us to do. And it's allowing us to take people uh, to situations that they would never be exposed to otherwise and allow them to walk in the shoes of somebody else. And, and that, um, from our perspective, this unfiltered first person experience um, is what's so dramatically different and also important to us as filmmakers and storytellers. This gives us a chance to, do, to really be in territory that up until now didn't exist. It's amazing. And for the folks watching, you know, it's, we've all been through, or most of us have been through mindset exercises, right? Because we know that mindset determines what we value to be true, right? What we believe. The challenge is really not necessarily just in the mindset, but mm -hmm. are we doing things differently, right? Do we believe this to be true? And yet we're still acting the way we've always acted. And this is really a turning point for that, right? Because not only we're we experiencing it, we're seeing it in the form of action. And that's massive. It's amazing. And so here's the thing, right? You and I have been studying um, implicit bias, unconscious bias for a really long time. Um, I'd love to know from your perspective, what have you personally learned about this? Something new, something different? So all of our work centers around implicit bias. Um, we are always dealing with it in some way. And with our first piece across the line in 2016, we had uh, Planned Parenthood as our executive producer. And they did decided to do something really important, which is they contracted with Sea Change to track attitudes before and after seeing our piece. And they looked at a sample size of 284 viewers. And what they realized was that everyone became a lot more aware of the situation um, and it did shift views. And what we saw was that people were, were less tolerant to the harassment that was happening outside of clinics because of experiencing our peace, which outside of this context, almost none of the people had gone through it ever experienced firsthand. But once they were there and seeing what there was to be seen and understanding the dynamics that happened, particularly the scale um, because they were in a woman's body, so they could see the difference in terms of height and, and scale of these other individuals that were talking to her, quite frankly, harassing them, mm -hmm. really got in their bones what this experience was more like. Um, so it, impact, it did indeed impact their mindset. This is incredible. So it's you're just blowing my mind right now, right? So here I am, virtual reality. It's not like I, I, if I'm a man, I can put on a woman's suit, right? Which we've seen in comedy sketches and all that during our growing up years. You're actually experiencing what it's like in most cases to be a smaller person, because women tend to be smaller in stature, um, and in experiencing what this feels like from a physical perspective and emotional perspective, because that all feeds into it, right? And again, I go back to the change journey and HR folks, you're very familiar with this, that there's no way to have that very true awareness of kind of what's going on. Unlike this, I mean, there is nothing like this, right? Virtual reality really enables you to experience a, a reality from that person's perspective who's most impacted. And then to be able to see that something has to change. That's when change starts, right? And then the yeah. next thing is your job is enabling them to change. So that brings me to um, the segue to this is fascinating stuff. We've heard about simulation training, especially with you know pilots, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to the rest of us, um, yeah. 
and HR professionals who are ultimately responsible for most of the change management and training. And we hear a lot of words around empathy and compassion for our people, for our customers. How can HR professionals engage with VR? So the good news is now today in 2019, we have lots of different uh, works that address implicit bias and relationships and interpersonal skills that are available and can be curated. So you can get an Oculus Go, you can get a headset and set up, you know, shop in the office and in the conference room and let people curate their experiences. And that is a very low cost and pretty straightforward way to go today by just using materials that already exist. What we have done is been commissioned to do pieces specific to certain companies where either implicit bias is a huge issue and it's really impacting the bottom line, or where, for instance, they might have a patient population or a customer population they don't really understand. There's a disconnect between the outside world and the inside world. In one case, we, were, we worked with a company that worked with rare diseases. And so we reached out and we did a day in the life um, of one of their patients so that the programmers who are working on the interface for their portal could get a sense of what it was like to be one of their clients. And that create, creating that empathy and compassion so that it would translate into the design, but also give them a sense of meaning and purpose as to why am I doing this day in and day out? And I think that's a real missing today that virtual reality can dramatically change. Kelly, this is fascinating. Now, I know what our viewers and listeners are thinking to themselves. This is awesome. I need to know more. Where do I start? Do you have a call to action for folks listening in today? You are more than welcome to check out our website. Uh, we are at crsvrlab.com. And also, I highly encourage you to also go to the ASH 68 site, which is ASH 68vr.com, which we'll put a link up in the site uh, for you. The other things you can do is I highly recommend uh, doing some searches on Google Scholar. There is so much good research that's happening around virtual reality and HR, particularly around cognitive biases. And I highly encourage you to take a look at that. Um, our piece and our research is just one of many studies that's been done over the last three years. Kelly, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Your experiences, your insights, they were amazing. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And don't forget to check out our archived episodes on HR.com. We release new episodes every day of the week so that you can stay up to date on all things HR. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you, audience. It has been a pleasure. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening to HR.com Live. We have new episodes daily to help you maximize your potential. Be sure to check out our archives on HR.com and share it with your friends. Cheers.